why we held those governmental exchanges. I'll give the example of the railway, the railway relocation. So immediately after NAC came into power, the NAC government came into power, they wanted to clear a lot of the public spaces, especially the road reserves, the railway reserves, so that they could expand infrastructure. And one of the areas that they really targeted was Kibera. And actually almost all the slums, because even they were looking at uh, the power line, so almost all the slums were affected. The first thing then that the civil society organizations did was to try and count, enumerate, to find out how many people are affected. And they counted and the number was huge, 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 huge. So then the question then arose, so what do we do? Obviously one of the solutions that was proposed, let's go to Tuku. At that time, Kituo Chasharia, um, headed by Mr. Opiata, then organized for uh, co uh, uh, the pleadings and they went to court. I think they got into remorders to prevent the eviction. But that was on, on only just a holding solution because I think if you followed the law, these people are on the reserve, so eventually they would have to go. So we started thinking, so what else can we do? We knew at that time that uh, the Indian uh, Federation had been able to negotiate for the relocation of 20,000 households from their railway reserve, and they had worked with their railway. So we thought probably they would, it would be good if we could be able to persuade our Kenyan railways to go and see what the Indians had done. So we went to the Kenya railways and somehow we went there several times, we went, we went, they got tired of seeing us, eventually we asked them, so why don't you just go to Bombay and see what the Indian railway has done. And of course, India has one of the largest, largest railway systems in the world and it's very close to the Kenyan system. So they said yes and we then spoke to the Indians. And the Indians agreed to organize for meetings with their Ken the, the Indian Railways. And we managed to get four professionals from the Kenya Railways to go to India. And they met their counterparts in India. And they discussed and they aired their worries about if we give our reserve, what happens if we need an expansion? Do we really need 30 meters? You have given up so much of your reserve. What will you do in the future? All of these questions they raised, and these questions were answered by professionals, the profession, Indian professionals. At the end of the day, they were persuaded that they needed to find a human solution to this problem. So when we came back, they invited us into their negotiations with the bank. At that time, it was IFC, International Finance Corporation, one of the sister organizations of the well back. So, we, so they actually invited us to, to join them as part of their negotiating team with the IF, IFC and we then managed to help the government negotiate for the relocation of uh, slum dwellers in, in Kibera. I think once professionals meet their peers it's more comforting because they're not being spoken to by civil society activists who only see one side of the coin. Because <laughs> when we speak to them, they, see, they, 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 they start from the assumption that we are biased, and I'm sure we are biased. But when they meet their professionals, their professionals are able to answer technical questions that we cannot answer. The technical questions that have to do with engineering. What if you have a runaway train? How much, how much space do you need to hoist the train back onto the rails? So they meet their contemporaries and they, 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 they discuss these issues. And then of course they also see, because they're also professionals, they see the possibilities even of what they could do with their own railway system. So it's broad learning for them and then also specific learning in, in regard to that question or that challenge that they face. And then it is done in, a, in an environment that is not tense. So like when we go, we have lots of fun. Railway people are the most amazing people because they've traveled through the countries and they have the most fantastic stories. <laughs> <laughs> so they share their stories and it's a lot of fun. So by the time you come back, you build trust, you build friendships. And again, then people are also more comfortable to speak to you about their fears so you're able to work better.